guitar practice session 11724. These are fairly sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to be working on and then give you a recap so you get an idea of what you're getting into. This, of course, being that recap, hoping the practice sessions generate a routine, help me to verbalize the things I'm trying to learn, possibly provide information to others learning similar things, possibly also providing for feedback if anybody sees a better way to do the things that I'm doing here. Remembering that I think that presenting the information as though someone else is listening, even if no one is listening is useful helping us to articulate things in a way that we might not otherwise do if we're just trying to do it for ourselves because we don't care about ourselves for some reason but if we try to tell someone else then we actually want them to know what the thing is that we're talking about so you might as well try to pretend like you're telling someone else so that you might care about telling them something useful so that's what i try to do here and if you want to take the information yourself and do your own presentations with them. We'll try to provide it, such as the worksheet. Don't worry about plagiarism or anything like that. The worksheet will be orientated, however, from our perspective, playing the guitar behind the guitar. If I imprint the guitar on the screen, then we'll have the top or low string on top, the one closest to the ceiling, top to bottom, left to right, same orientation as us behind the guitar. I will shift my guitar so it looks like I'm left-handed on the screen so that it will line up more closely to the worksheet and to our perspective from behind the guitar, making it easier for us to just focus in on the different uh, shapes of the fretboard without spinning the guitar around in our mind. We're continuing on in the minor scale, but this time we're going to the 11th interval. So I discussed basically the method that we will be learning to basically try to learn every position on the guitar if it was our root position every interval from that position using the symmetry of the guitar to help us out with that objective remembering that that objective in and of itself is not as useful if i don't know when that interval is going to help me out now how can i know when the interval of the 11th can be used clearly if i'm in like a minor scale and i want to add the 11th it will be useful there but what other where else would it be useful when i go from a one four five can i play that 11th with the same shape relative to the four and fives which are generally going to be minor chords uh and does that shape also apply when i go into the majors to ask that question, I go into like our normal kind of bigger picture scenario. So we have it in the back of our mind. It's worth reiterating every time so we can kind of get an idea of it. We want to basically learn, you know, all of the, all of the modes, basically starting maybe with the major scale, using it as our reference point. I'm going to number the modal system based on the major scale allowing us to use it as our rosetta stone as we go to other scales such as the minor scale which is basically the minor mode it's relative to its major in that it's the sixth of the major there I'm, therefore i'm going to call it another name for the minor scale the aeolian mode which i'm going to give an absolute number number six two so then i if i look from this perspective then we're focusing in on the 11th how do I know that I can play the 11th with the four and the five? We have to compare the other modal scales to the one that we are on. And so that way I can say, as I learn the 11th, then uh, where can I apply that to from a modal chord construction to practically play it when I'm playing a progression, not only in the minor scale, but in all other modes as well. And we'll do a discussion a little bit on when will that 11 in particular be the same for the major uh, scales, which will be like two out of three of the major modes will also be useful for that 11. So knowing this interval is highly useful because it applies to all of them. Now we'll also talk about the difference between just to reiterate in our mind, chord construction, which goes every other note, one, three, five, seven nine eleven and thirteen how does that compare to the fact that we have a scale construction with only seven notes uh within it now that we're over here on the 11 
And if I say I'm adding an 11, does that mean I'm adding the 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11, which is almost impossible on the guitar, considering there's only six strings, there's only six notes you could possibly play at one time? Uh, or, or can we just basically, I'm going to look at it from adding the bass line and then uh, the 11. So we kind of go over that in recap, and then we jump back on over here and dive into the, to the top two strings which are possibly the most useful because those are the ones that most people think of building chords from these top two strings, but we'll, and then we'll look at every relative positions uh, to them. And then I tell a joke, which isn't the, what's well, not my best work, I gotta say, but I thought it was kind of funny. I don't know. I might've stole it from someone. I don't remember who, if I stole it from someone, then, you know, it's possible. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It was kind of funny though. And then I go, uh, and then, uh, that's basically it. I jam a little bit at the end, but that's pretty much uh, what I do. Today, we're continuing on with the minor scale, otherwise known as mode number six, the Aeolian mode, but this time looking at the 11th interval, our objective being very similar in that we would like to be able to pick any note on the guitar, thinking of it as the root note, being able to find every available 11th interval from that root note, memorizing that shape will allow us then to be able to apply that to any note on the guitar. Our strategy then is to look somewhere in the middle of the guitar, like fret five is where we will typically be working, and then choose uh, each string as the root note, and then think about every 11th related to it. So if I choose this A here, you would think this would be kind of overwhelming, but it's not because there's only one eleventh per string, right? So we have one eleventh uh, per string that we'll be working on, and then I'll go to, to the next one down like the D and find every eleventh related to it. If we can do that in the middle of the guitar, then we should be able to shift anywhere up and down the fretboard and the relationships will be the same. And note that we have to do it on every string of the guitar because when we cross the fault line here, the relationships differ because of the different uh, aspect of the fault line. So that's why we choose basically every note uh, down this way. And then if I know the interval on each string, I can shift that uh, sideways and all of, the, all of the related notes should shift with it like copying and pasting on an Excel worksheet. All right, so before we dive into that, let's give a quick recap of the overarching objective here as we're going through this. So we keep that in the back of our mind and I keep reiterating it kind of in a different way uh, to help kind of get the points down and refine what I'm trying to do. That's why I kind of go over it each time here. So I'm gonna go back to the related modes. We're thinking of normally in Western music, we think of the major scale. We're now on the minor scale, noting that the major and minor are often thought of not even as modes, but scales in and of themselves. But they're really related because they're related modes to each other, just like all of the modes, the modes being constructed by taking every note within a scale creation, which was created with just a formula, right? And then we take every note in the, in the uh, scale creation and we start from there and we, we build the, 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 the scale from there. So, the, so that means, of course, there's going to be seven modes. And we could also think of the chords in a similar fashion as we think of the modes. In some ways, they're equivalent. When we do chord creation, we can think of them as a chord created from a particular mode, typically. And that's very helpful to be able to do. We don't usually name all of the chords that way because it's possible to build a chord that doesn't fit into a particular mode or scale, right? So we need a naming con convention to be able to deal with that. But from a practical standpoint, it's useful to be thinking about chord creations and from a modal perspective uh, as well. And that'll help us to think about whether we're in the same mode. So for in the, in the major key, what we'll typically do is we'll list out the relative positions. I usually work in the key of C and related modes like A minor for the minor scale because that gives us a check figure, but I'm not concerned with the notes per se, although memorizing the notes can be useful. It's not as useful as memorizing the relative positions that are movable, which then allow us to move these shapes up and down the fretboard, at least in theory. Your hand isn't going to be able to do it automatically. You'll have to work with it tecton, tec, tact, 
tolly with your hand, <laughs> with feeling it out with your hand, but you'll be able to get the concept down. That's the I, that's what I want to do here with the theory sessions I'm looking at. So so then uh, once I get the notes down, I want to be able to build chords to build songs from them. I should be able to play any tune, any rhythm, any melody, and say, hmm, I can convert that melody into something with chords. And if I was on a piano, of course, I might use my other hand to accentuate the chords. But if I'm on the guitar, I can turn any, any note in a melody into a chord. The question is, what chord can I turn it into? Well, if it's in a major scale, it's gonna be the one, four, five notes can be major chords, the two, three, and six minor, and the seventh, then a Locrian. So I can memorize that, and that's great. Those are just created by basically taking every note, the second note here, and then picking every other note in the progression, which leads to, in this case, a minor third, which defines a triad as either a major or minor, minor third for a minor triad. So most people say, okay, that's practical for us to memorize that. But what if the song isn't in the key of a major key? What if it's in like the Phrygian? Well, then there, you're going to have, it might have the same notes in it. If it's, if it's the relative major to something, right? You can find it relative to whatever major it is, but they'll be in a different order. So now the question is, well, how can I convert each of these notes that are now being played in Phrygian to a chord if I want to convert because I can't just say the one, four, five. One way is I can convert it using the, the, the C or the major scale as our rubric uh, to, to tie it to or as our comparison tool. So I could say, well, if it's in Phrygian, the Phrygian is the third of the major. It would be the third chord. It would be the third relative position. I'm going to call it the third mode from an absolute numbering standpoint. If it's the third mode, it's two, it's two steps down from the Ionian mode. And therefore my formula could be whatever mode I'm on, number three, Phrygian, minus one gives me the number of steps down from number one on the major scale, minus whatever I'm looking for. Say I'm looking for the third of the Phrygian. So it'd be three minus one is two, plus three gives me five. In other words, it would be the fifth of the relative major scale and I know the one four five make a major chord and therefore the third of the Phrygian I would build a major chord from if I wanted to build a chord from it and it would be in the same key you might say well why can't I build a minor chord you could but the minor third won't be in the same key that's the point we're trying to we're trying to play something that's all in the same key and the one that's going to be in the same key is the major now beyond that, however, I can also name the mode as Mixolydian. So if I want to go beyond the one, uh, three, five for chord creation, then the seven, nine, eleven, and thirteen will not follow exact suit with the major minor construction, and therefore I have to think about that systematically. Otherwise, what happens is I start to learn all these different chords. And I, and I name them and I learn how to finger them, but I don't know when I'm able to play them. I mean, I can throw them in anywhere I want and use my ear, but I can't, I don't know if it should fit just in terms of should it fit in the same key or not. And I want to start to think logically, like, why would that fit or why wouldn't it fit? Is it in the same key or is it not in the same key? And how can I get to that system? Well, the way to do that is I could say, I think the most systematic way is to say, well, I'm going to take the Ionian, look at all of the, all of the intervals, which these are the intervals as they're compared to the root note. I'll learn the shapes for all of those intervals related to the, to the Ionian. And then I'll compare the two other major modes to them, which is going to be the four and the five, which I could describe as Lydian and Mixolydian. I don't need to if I just call them a major triad because it's just a major triad because the third will be major whether I think of it as a, a major F major or F Lydian or, or a G major or a G Mixolydian. But if I want to be in the same key to add the seven and the nine, then I do have to think about whether I'm going to be playing in Lydian Mixolydian or if I'm just going to shift over to an F major and a G major, right? So if I want to be in the same key as I go to these two, I need to be in the related modal keys 
So then I can go to the Lydian and I can say, okay, let me look at all of these intervals. They're all going to be the same as the related major except one. That's how the relationship works. And then I can just figure out what that one difference is, which will allow me to know when, for example, here I can play the 11th. I can, I can play the 11th that's the same as the major shape with the one and the five, the Ionian and Mixolydian, but not with the Lydian. And then with the Mixolydian, I have a seventh. It's a minor seventh. And that's the one I really think is important to kind of remember. So then I can say, well, I can, I can play the, all the same notes, all the same intervals on the Ionian. But when I go to the fifth, the Mixolydian, the seventh will be that very important and distinct minor seventh. What about when I go to the minor scale? Well, the minor scale is I Aeolian. And so I could compare the Aeolian to the Ionian. So once I learn all these intervals, I then go to the second most important scale in Western music, typically comparing it to the major scale, looking at the intervals and saying, all of the perfects will remain the same. All of the majors will be flattened except one. So the perfect first is the same as the major. The second is the weird one because you have, a, you have the second is a two note away major second, which is the same as all the majors. The third is now a three note away minor third instead of a four note away capital M major third. And then the fourth is a five note away perfect fourth, which is the same. The fifth is a seven note away perfect fifth. The sixth is an eight note away minor six as opposed to a nine note away major six representing minor with a small m. The seventh is a 10 note away minor seventh as opposed to an 11 note away major seventh. So when I'm looking at these, the intervals for the major scale, I could look at the, at the minor uh, related to it and look at all the differences, right? There's all the perfects will be the same and then all the other ones will be different. But oftentimes we look at the minor because it's kind of the opposite of the major. It's as far away as the majors you can get, although it's not exactly as far away because you would think the Phrygian is actually the main minor. It's more minor than, than the main minor or it's the minor ist minor because it has a minor second in it. But we do the same thing. We learn all the, all the intervals here. We have a minor third for them, but when I want to go to the seven, nine, 11, and 13, then I do the same thing. I can say, okay, well, if I play in the minor, first of all, note that the one, four, five are still minor uh, chords, but the two, three, six are not the major. The two is that funny Locrian, therefore the three, six, seven are the majors. So when you're in the minor mode, you still have the one, four, five that are now the minors, which kind of makes sense. But now it's the three, six, seven that are the majors when you look at it from the perspective of the minor. All the same notes, all the same chords. It's just now we're looking at it from a different perspective, kind of like physics, you know, looking at it from a different uh, angle. It's all the same. It's just we're looking at it differently and it, everything sounds different when you look at it from the different angle. So then, so, so then once we learn, once we learn all, of, all of these positions, then we can look at the things that are different, meaning if I go to the Dorian here, there's going to be a difference uh, that we have to consider in the Dorian, the 13 or the 6, if you, which are, and then we have the uh, Phrygian, which is going to have a difference in the 9, which you can think of as the 2. Okay. So this time we're focused in on the 11th. So no, the other thing that, that I want to keep in mind is when, when we name these intervals, we can name them as a scale, which means we name, name the intervals as they're related to the first here. And, and that's how we name them this way. But when we chord name them, we build the chords by picking every other note in the chord. And so if I do that, like I would say, okay, if I build a long chord, a big chord, the first would be the one. The second note I would add would be a three because I skipped the two. The third note would be a five because I skipped the four. The fourth note would be a seven because I skipped the six. And then there's no more notes. I want to go back to the two around the horn. You can think of as another octave, but I'm just going to think of it as a circle. But I'm not going to call it a two. I'm going to call it a nine, right? So and then I go to, and then I skip another note and go to the to the four, which I'm going to call the eleven, and then skip a note to to get to the six and the thirteen. So these are when you see it this way. This is still just a scale. Same. It's just a scale for effort, but we're putting it in terms of the chords, meaning we're going to skip every other note 
when we build a chord, but you can imagine a chord with seven notes in it, which would be a very full chord. We don't typically play chords with seven notes, especially on the guitar, because it's impossible, because there's only <laughs> six strings, but that's the, that's the idea. So we're gonna be out here on uh, the 11. So on the 11, that means the 11 is equivalent to uh, the four, right? So the 11 is equivalent to the four, so the four would be a perfect fourth. So it's a, the fourth is a five note away perfect fourth. Now that's interesting because note that the fourth is typically the, the five note away fourth is good on the major scale as well because on the Ionian. So the question is, once we look at this 11, where does it apply? Well, you can see it's good on the, 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 the uh, Aeolian it's also good on the Dorian and the Phrygian. So on all of the minors, we have the same 11. And that perfect uh, fourth is also good on the Ionian because it's a perfect. Therefore, it's also good on the major. And, and, but it differs on the Lydian, which we talked about uh, when, we, when we looked at the majors. So I believe it's the Lydian. Yeah, it's the Lydian. That has, a, that has a funny fourth, an augmented fourth that we talked about before. So the 11th is good on almost everything because it's a perfect and it's good on all of the minors, which is our, which is our focus uh, here. Also remember that when we build a chord, we typically build up. So if I say there's a chord, an 11 chord, then in theory you would say, okay, well that would mean I'd have a one, three, five, seven, nine, and 11 possibly, right? But again, we're probably not going to do that on the guitar. We're probably going to grab an 11 on top of whatever we're playing. So I would, I would think I'm going to look at it in terms of we have, I'm going to try to build the baseline, the one, three, five, and then add the 11, right? Otherwise we're going to get all whack. It's going to get all crazy because, because you could add the seven and the 11 or the nine and the 11. And we might touch in that if there are, if those chords, if those notes are available to me, but I'm mainly just thinking of the 11 as it relates to like the one, three, five. And if I can't grab the, fi the five, I'll just go with the one and the three. And then if I have to drop another one, I'll drop uh, uh, the three and grab the five. And then, and then if it's convenient, if I have an added finger, I'll think about adding the seven and nine possibly as we're working out here. All right, that's the idea. Let's go back on over to the tab to the right. We're going to start up top with the A up top, and let's go through this. So we're going to go do it, and we'll go here. Okay. Okay. All right, so let's start on the first string. So if I'm on the, if I'm on the 11, uh, the 11 is equivalent to the fourth, so I can call it a five-note away perfect fourth or a five-note away perfect 11th, if we want to call it that. If I'm on the same string five notes away, then I'm just going to count up five notes and we go up five notes. So that's usually a little beyond what we reach for most of the time. So one, two, three, four, five, right? So we're going to be on the 10, but it's reachable, especially if you're on the higher registers of the guitar. So whenever I play something like that, I usually think of my reaching, my reaching fingering positions, because here's my pattern. And I'm starting to look at these patterns that are beyond just like the five shape patterns. So I'm thinking what I, this is my fingering theory right now. <laughs> Take it with a grain of salt. Like if I had, like if I, if I was reaching four frets up just to this, uh, to this C and there were only three notes that I'm playing, there's, there usually is only three notes that are actually in the key when I'm reaching that far up, I would play it with a pinky ring pointer. If I'm reaching, if I'm, if I was reaching like to this note up, then I'm usually going to reach, uh, five frets. And even though there's only three notes that I'm going to be playing there, I would, I would reach up, uh, wait a second. I would reach up here and then maybe play that with this finger, my pointer. Because it, like, if I just span that space, my pointer is happens to be on that a little bit more readily than this finger. That's why I think that way. So I think it would be easier to do that. And then if I'm, if I'm reaching out five notes, 
five frets, then typically in a normal seven note scale, there's going to be two notes in between. So now I'd like to play each note with one finger. So, if, so which is a little stretchy because now I'm going to play uh, this one on 10 with my pinky and see my fingers right over this note now. So I should be able to just go. So that's a little wonky, but then I, then I think about like, how can I practice that? Because now I'm, I'm reaching up here, like with this finger versus reaching up with this finger sometimes. So sometimes I, I'm, I'm like, okay, how can I practice that? Maybe I can, like if I'm reaching up five frets, I can go with every finger, boom, 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 and then reach back up with just three notes, which means I'm gonna reach the other way. So I could practice that. And that helps me to kind of think, try to get in my mind to get the synapse going to saying, I'm, when am I going to use this finger versus this finger? And when am I going to reach up? here past the shape and if you're working if you're if you're used to working in a five note pattern like and me in like a minor scale most of the time i'm used to going here so even going here feels funny and going way out there feels way funny but it's totally doable so it should so i should be i should be able to do that pretty fast alternate picking i can't but I should be able to. <laughs> so that's how I feel about it, at least. And then I have a fifth right here. So then I could, this is like a shuffle, a shuffle pattern that I could try to do in the minor, a minor shuffle pattern. So here's my five. I'm gonna reach with this finger to that five now. And I could reach out here. thinking shuffle pattern with his G below it. Here's a G below it. And then so now so now I'm reaching to this G. And then I can periodically reach up maybe to that D. Do that too much reaching that far out but it seems like you can get you should be able to get a cool shuffle especially if you have big hands but if you hold your guitar up high i think you can reach that without super big hands but in any case so let's go to the one below it so if i go below it now i've got uh, a distance of uh, a five note away perfect fourth which i can also call a five note away perfect 11 which is right underneath it here so that makes sense because there's five notes in between and that's our standard when i was looking at this before if you've been watching these for a while i used, i was doing the the uh scales and looking at the interval and the perfect fourth is always right underneath now i just want to add to i just want to add in my thought process that perfect fourth is equivalent from a chord creation uh, thing to a perfect 11, right? A perfect fourth and a perfect 11 from my perspective. Now you might say, well, it should be an octave up to be right if I was on the piano or something. But again, I don't have that many options. So I'm just going to be like, it's the same. The fourth is the same as the 11 to me right now. Uh, so again, you could get technical, and, like uh, disagree with me. Uh, and that's okay. <laughs> I'm gonna do it anyways. I might even be wrong. I might be stupid. You might be listening to me and I'm, a, and I'm an idiot. 
Uh, it's, it's a quite real possibility, but <laughs> this is gonna be a one, three, uh, wait a sec, one, three, eleven, one, three, perfect eleven, one, three, perfect eleven, one, three, perfect eleven, one, three, perfect eleven, and then of course we have going this way, uh, I could also, by the way, grab, well, let's go this way. Where we have the nice, this one, and then I could reach out here to arpeggiate, right? So I could go one, three, five, eleven, one, three, or you could think of that as a four. One, three, four, five, one, three, four, five, one, three, four, five, or one, three, five, eleven, one, three, five, eleven, power chord. B to the end, what else do we got? I've got a three down here. So if I'm on, if I was playing the good old uh, A shaped bar chord, why do I call it a bar chord? Cause that's what I play when I'm in the bar. Uh, I'm playing in the bar. I'm gonna say, <laughs> Okay, so that so it would be this. Boom. And then I could pick up my five right there and go boom boom. Revealing. chord the blues chord is right here or in between so I can kind of go between these three notes that are all good because that's a, the blues chord in the middle so it could be like blues note not a chord the blues note all right anyways anyways What else do we have? What do we got? We've got a, oh, what is happening? That was weird, I better undo that. I felt like something funny happened there. We've got a, a five up here, which is muy interessante. So I could go boom, bar those off. And the five on the nine. Right there. So I picked up the G, which is the seven. So that's kind of interesting because then I can pick up the seven. So again, I can play my normal A A bar, A minor bar shape, or it's, a, it's an E minor shape in the A minor position. And then I can go up. And then I want to switch here to here. All right, how can I do that? I was out. Oh, well, I just want to reach up to this is on the nine. Yeah, because it's the E. That's quite a reach. I hope I had that right last time. That's pretty reachy. It's doable. I could, might be able to get the fifth here, too. But no, I don't want the fifth. Want... So it's possible. My hand hurts. 
I've got another three down here. So I could be like my A and reveal and put my other finger down here. Move on. Moving on water. Moving on. So let's go here to here. Let's do a both play or reach. If I was, but it's an open string here, so I could pick up. So this is kind of cool, like this way, because I have the three the five so that's my that's my minor chord and then i could shift back this note to here and that's my blues note the flat five and then i could go back to the d which would be uh the 11. Now, if I ha if that now it's open here, but it might would it be doable? Let's try that. If I was up here on the C, same shape, it would be. So let's do it on the C. C minor, flat five, and then it's doable. doable and by the way that is if I was to count that up I'm counting up uh, a five note away perfect fourth or five note away perfect 11 5 10 9 8 7 6 5 makes sense all right let's go to the next one five note away uh, perfect fourth so it's going to be 5 10 15 and then I can bring that down. 15 minus 12 is 5 minus 2, which is 3, 4, 5. So that makes sense. Five notes away. Perfect four. So I'm going to say or 11, perfect fourth, 11. So from here to here. So that, again, kind of fits into my A shape, my, uh, my A minor shape, if I'm looking at it from top to bottom here. And I'm like doing this. And then like this would be my normal shape. But then I could try to do it like this way so that I so that I bring my three fingers in and I do it like that. So now I have the one, five. 11, 5, 1. Or I might just bar it. So it almost looks like an A shaped bar, but it's not because it's up. The A shape would be down here, so it's up top. It's funny, I don't, I don't normally do that. It's pretty easy to do. You don't want to play that. I don't want to play this one below it then. So I'm basically muting the bottom two strings if I do it this way. So it'd be like. Or I can play it this way. I can let go of the second A, which I don't need and then play and then reveal the G which would be the seven so that would be cool so I can be like here's my A minor revealing the seven the G, 
and then placing my finger on the 11, the D. And that I lose the third to do that. do we got what do we got i have a third dude i've got a third out here so i've got the third normal minor third place could i reach that d at the same time i'd have to finger it a little funky funky fingering but it's doable Got this other finger I can't really do nothing with. So that's interesting. So I could play, so if I was doing that, I could play like this other third here or maybe this fifth and then switch it out to that one. So I could be like, what if I was doing like this third to mute that way all the other strings I can mute this way so with this third could be cool too. So I'm grabbing the G. Oh, that's kind of interesting. So I can grab this one. kind of cool. All right. I've got this one here. I've got a fifth back here. That's even more of a reach. I don't think that's doable to also grab. Yeah, that's quite uncomfortable. That's like listening to a political debate. It's very uncomfortable. I'm not, I don't like that. Okay, let's try the next one. So now we have crossed the fault line. Here's the fault line, the San Andreas is right above it. So this whole plate tectonic has shifted to the right. So now we've got five, 10, 15, and then out here, well, I could bring it down 15 from right here, minus 12 is five minus two which is three, and then three plus five going out this way because of the kink of the tuning is eight, and then backwards, eight, seven, six, five. So it's still five notes away. So there we have it. So it's five note away, perfect fourth, or five note away, perfect 11. So I go from here back to here. So what can I do with that? I've got a third, which is here. So if I was going like boom, boom, boom. 
So I'm muting this. I'm trying to mute everything else. So that's interesting. Because if I was playing my normal A shape, my normal, you know, G minor shaped A minor chord like this, one, three, five, how easy would it be to just go boom, boom? Uh, that's wrong. It's easy to do that, but it's wrong. What's that? That's not what was the D. The D, dude. One, three, four, one, three, eleven. So here's my minor. And then like, I'm like. And while I bar, I could bar this off. To get this 13 in there. Which might sound, might not sound good. I don't know. Cause I'm losing the five. Well, what's happening is I lose the five. And then I bring it back here. Mute. So I'm like minor chord. To this. to toy with that a bit it's got potential P for potential P for peen <laughs> P for peen uh, okay I could go here P for possibilities P for possibilities. That's what I P for. If you're gonna, everybody's got a P, you might as well P for possibilities. That's what I say. If I just scrubbed. If you're gonna have to P anyways, why not P for possibilities? P for possibilities. I've, that's what I'm talking about. That's doable. Maybe I already have that one so maybe i pick up this maybe i skip that one and i pick up that c so now i've got the one seven three eleven or four. Oh, that is pretty I used to play that a lot, actually. I know that chord. That's actually a good voice. I haven't done that as much lately. I think that's a... I have stumbled across... P for possibilities, man. P for possibilities. If you're gonna, if everyone's got a P anyways, you might as well P for possibilities. Okay. <laughs> Let's try. 
Let's try the next one. I'm looking for a, a five note away perfect four. So five, 10, 15. 15 minus 12 is five minus two, five, four, three, plus five, five, six, seven, eight, plus <laughs> five is eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. What is happening? I, f I totally got out of way. So five, 10, 15. 15 minus 12 is five minus two, which is three, plus five is eight. Kink in the tuning, eight plus five is eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 minus 12 is, uh, uh, 13 is 3 minus 1, which is 2, 3, 4, 5, I, I messed up. Oh, my head is going. Okay, look, I'm just going to say that this was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here, and because this is an E and this is an E, it's the same note. I could count it up, but I can't do it right now because my head is broken. So it's going to be from here to here. I see it there. Not the most practical thing. It's quite a reach. So I'm going to leave it as is. All right, let's tell a joke before the next one here. Joke break. Uh, this, is, this is not my best work on this one, but here we go anyways. Uh, and I'm going to drink some coffee first. All right, here we go. You know, I have a, we over here, have a surprising answer to the old equation one plus one one plus one it seems like an easy equation but this answer could be a little a little unexpected you see as you may not be aware two huh surprising answer surprising answer bet you weren't expecting that not post halloween at least that sounds like a halloween joke and even and even if you did, you you couldn't you couldn't have expected the cartoon werewolf here. That's what we do here. We make we make the equa simple equations like interesting. Not always with a jump scare. That's kind of cheap, but you know that's we put it together here. So that's what we do. Anyways, you you know those those old horror alien movies were quite scary the old horror alien movies but the worst ones were those with the parasite aliens those gross parasite aliens why because they were totally inhuman get it the parasites they were in human oh grown all you want now, if you had any class you wouldn't be here in the first place freaking ingrates whatever sons of a bee gaggle Let's just, let's just get back to it. Uh, that's all I got. That was, I know it was kind of underwhelming there, but what are you going to do? Uh, let's go to the next one down, a D. Let's see, we have a D. All right, so we're going to be here. Okay, so now we have revealed a string above it, which we haven't seen that relationship yet. And then when I go from this relationship down one, two, three strings, it'll be different from this relationship down one, two, three strings because the kink of the tuning is between these three strings. In other words, this plate tectonic shifted to the right. Okay, given that, let's go above it first because that's going to be the new one. So I'm looking for an 11th, which is equivalent to a fourth for us. So it's a five note away perfect fourth or five note away perfect 11th. When I go above it, I need to look at the inverse because the distance between the notes will be the inverse, which is 12 minus 5, which would be 7. So I'm looking for a 7 note away perfect fifth, which I can see here because notice the perfects are inverses of each other. So the fourths, perfect fourth and perfect fifth will be an inverse of each other. So, so that means, so I'm, and I'm looking above it then five notes away is just going to be this A. So when I look at that, that shape from top to bottom, A to D is a five note away perfect fourth from bottom to top. 
D to A is a seven note away. I mean, is it, I'm sorry, from top to bottom is uh, a five note away uh, perfect. Now, wait a second. That's, that's wrong. It's not the A. <laughs> uh, it's going to be five, four, uh, three. It's going to be this G. And this is negative five, six, seven. Okay. Get your head in the game. So the inverse is a seven that I get these mixed up. I st no matter how many times I do it, because I'm a little like, I think I might have, a, I mean, my mind gets numbers, gets things backwards sometimes. So the fact that you have a five note away perfect fourth and a seven note away perfect fifth, and you have these fourth and fifths inverted like that, just kills me. Like, <laughs> so, but <laughs> when I go from top to bottom, I've got a, a seven note away perfect fifth and therefore from bottom to top is a five note away perfect fourth or five note away perfect 11 okay got it all right so then i can say that if that's the case what else could i add here well i've got this third right there so that would give me uh now wait a second now i'm on the wrong now i'm on the wrong strings here's the <laughs> i'm sorry this would be, I'm on the G to the D. So that would be a same shape, but I was on the wrong, I was up on the A to the E. This is gonna be a five note away perfect four, seven, up this way. Uh, sorry, <laughs> top to bottom, seven note away perfect fifth, fifth, bottom to top, five note away perfect fourth. All right, for goodness gracious. Let's add the F. That's kind of nice. Now I could play it this way or I could bar it off. And if I bar it off, I could also add like the 13 underneath it and whatnot. So I could play it like this and then try to mute the strings underneath it or, or ring them out if I want to play another D in this case. Or I could, I could bar it off like this. obviously kind of sound, looks like I'm playing a G you know minor or something but I'm thinking of it from the perspective of the D okay uh, what else do I got oh this is the one where I've got a I got a fifth over here so now I've got a fourth or 11 the one and then the five And then again, I could bar this off to get like the three as well. So I could bar it off this way to get the three and then, and then reach out here. Now I'm, not, I'm losing the three, but I'm picking up the five. Five. Is that how that's working? Yeah. And if I grab this one, I'm getting that 13. I could try not to get the 13. Anyway. All right. We've got that. I've got that going for me, which is nice. Uh, I, I've got... There's no way, here's my normal D-shaped uh, minor. Would look like this, one, three, five. Could I grab that one on top somehow? I could switch like that. One, three, five. And then two, 11, one, three. Or 11, 1, 5.
kind of cool. All right. So uh, I was up here. So what else do I got? I went here, here. I've got a three down here. So I could say if I was playing my D shape this way, it would be a D, it would be a D, an A minor, D minor shape, A minor shape, D minor chord. So what if I was playing that? And then here's my third. And I want it to like go to here. Here's my 11, 1, 3. So I could go from here. My A minor shape D chord. I think I had it wrong before. There it is. Another G, <laughs> or I could bring in the C, which is the seven. That's probably cooler. So now I've got the eleven one mute. The C is the seven, and the eleven, and then the three. A minor shape D minor chord. To this interesting I have to noodle around with that a bit that's interesting all right let's see what else we got on the same string I've got the uh, 11 up here so now and then in between that that's the one where I have this interesting shuffle pattern so this, so if I went from here to here, like I would think of that as my like minor, a D minor kind of shuffle. And then I could reach up periodically to here. And then I could reach up periodically to here, and then of course I can let go, which brings out this G. So shuffle pattern. kind of a reachy pat shuffle but it's there and then if I go below it I'm looking for a five note away perfect fourth or five note away perfect 11 which is right underneath it because there's five notes in between so that's my normal that's probably the go-to shape and of course that still fits into the shuffle pattern that I was just doing but the easier shuffle pattern is here where I have the one three five 11, 1, 3, 5, 11, so power chord.
obviously fun to do and that's like that is basically the you can think of that as like position one this pattern if i was on up here on the d position one would be one one two three four five six seven eight all right so so same thing here all right so then that's that i could go behind over here so now i've got here to here so i could go and then reach out to that five so I've got the one to the three. And then let go of the three to get to the 11. One to the three. And then maybe one to the five. One to the 11. Okay, I have an A above it, so I have that shape, which is interesting, because I got like a, I've got like, let's go this way again, where I have like the third out here, and I could be like, and then instead of adding the fifth this way, I can go to the fifth. Like this. Or I can bar it. And then if I pick up that C, I get the I get the eleven. I get the seven. got a five back here so now this is my normal D sh minor shape and then if I drop the third I can do this so that's interesting from this shape, my normal D minor shape. To this shape. Bit of a reach, but doable. Push your thumb behind, but I want to. I'm trying to mute this string with my thumb. Uh, let's move on. My head is getting tired. I'm waning. Let's do the next one. This is gonna be a, a five note away, perfect fourth, five note away, eleven, five, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. 
So that's doable, that's the same shape, relative position we saw here, which again is cool because then I have this, this, my normal lean back D minor, and then I can reach back to this one, which would be my flat five, the blues note, for a blues minor. And then I could reach back to this one, which here is an open, so I can just let go. But if it wasn't, I could still reach it, I think. Especially if I was higher on the guitar, so it'd be like. Let's do the relative positions here. So I'm in E minor now. Flat five. And then reaching back. much more I can do with that. Let's leave it there and go to the next one. So we have crossed the fault line now. So that means the relative position from here, one, two, three strings down, will be shifted up from the relative position here that we were on A, three strings down, because when I was over here, I wasn't uh, hitting the fault line. So it was, I believe, A to D, right? And now I'm on D to to G, but it's shifted up. I think that's how it works. Hopefully I got that right. So it would be five, 10, and then fault line goes up to 15, bringing it down 15 minus 12, five minus two is three, and then four, five. So five notes away. So now we have from this D to this G. Okay, so now if I'm on this D again, I have my my minor shape, which would look like this normally, that'd be my A minor bar shape uh, for a D chord, A minor bar shape D chord. And then I'm now, once again, I'm letting go of this. I can't reach it with this finger, but I can basically say, uh, what do I want to keep in this shape? I want to keep the, 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 the fifth here and then reach out and grab this, uh, this one. So I could, if I'm in this shape, if I open up, as we saw before, if I open up this finger, I get my G here, right there. So that's good. I could bar this whole thing off and just grab this. And that gives me two Gs, so that would be the D, an 11, the 1, the 11, and the C is the 7. And then I lost the third, but rather got another 11. So I could go like, and then bar it, which brings in the 9, 2, pull in the 3, and then to the 11 out here. And then as I'm grabbing that, I could also get the 5th if I wanted to. So now it's the one, five. If I can get that to ring out, it would be the C is a seven, and then the G. could go behind it right here and grab a third this way. But that's too far. It's quite a reach. Maybe what if I went back here, but then I have the fifth out here. 
Or maybe I go to the third here. So now I've got... The fifth would be way out here. It's doable. Awkward reach. I could... Also maybe try to get that nine if I barred this. Oh, all right, let's stop there. I have to, let's try to finish this thing off, man. You've, this has gone too long. You're pulling too much time. You're breaking your own rules. 5, 10, 15, so that would be 15 minus uh, 12 would be 5 minus 2 is 3, plus 5 is 8, 7, 6, 5. Oh, I got it that time. And that, also I know if that's a 5th, then this has to be, I mean an 11th, this has to be an 11. 5 note away, uh, perfect 4th, or 5 note away, perfect 11. All right. So we have from here down to here. So I could grab like the third here. That's interesting. So if I have my normal lean back shape from this D up top, it would look like this. And then maybe I switch from that to just trying to bar this whole thing off. And that would pick up the 13, another one down to the, f to, to the bottom. So I could be like, Now what if I don't want that 13, then I can grab like, maybe try to grab just those two. I'm trying to bar this off, but it's hard not to get that B to ring out, which is a problem. Now I get the top string to ring out. Let it go. I'm stopping it there. Let's, can I go this way? There's a third down here. That should be doable, right? So we got here, here, here. Well, it's quite, that's not, oh, well, what? stop it there. Well, I could get the G underneath it. Alright, I need to stop. It's over. It's over. <laughs>